welcome to the Methodist Church Diana District's Divine Worship. We are happy that you have joined us today. The Methodist Church Diana District is one of eight districts that comprise the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. There are six circuits that make up the Guyana district, Burbese, Essequibo, Friendship, Georgetown, Mahaika, and West Demerara, with the United Mission, Linden, as an associate church. The president of the Guyana district is Bishop the Reverend Taslin Kofia Niles, the Secretary of the District Conference is Reverend Mervyn Ossie Austin, while the Treasurer of the District Funds is Miss Yolanda Abiola James. The mission of our church is spreading scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation, while our district theme reads renewed in Christ for service and witness. I am your liturgist, Neil Williams, from the Moka Congregation. Pleasure to be with you. Today we will have our sermon by Reverend Judy Patterson. 
At this point in time, I invite you to quiet yourself as we focus on God and we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today. Let us go into our call to worship. Worship and thanks and praise to you, O God. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us praise Jesus Christ, the King of glory. We glory in the Lord Jesus Christ, who for our salvation, journeyed towards the cross in sorrow for the restoration of right relations between God and his people. You are truly the King of Kings. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us rejoice in the Holy Spirit. We rejoice in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, by whom we are renewed and refreshed to service and witness in Christ's kingdom. Amen and amen. At this time, we prepare our hearts for confession. Let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against each other in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Christian friends, when you have prayed that prayer of confession, we receive the assurance of pardon. And the assurance of pardon is for all of us. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So hear the good news. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from not some, but all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. At this time, we will stand. I invite you to stand as you're able where you are. As we blend our voices together in glorious harmony, as we have some songs in praise. We worship 
because you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are Hosanna. You are high and lifted up. And we magnify your name this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. We magnify.
We thank you for your plan of salvation realized in your son, Jesus Christ. We celebrate joyfully on this Palm Sunday the commemoration of your entry into Jerusalem to fulfill your mission of redemption for our sins and the enablement for us to gain eternal life. Lord, who felt the anguish that awaited you and wept for the sinful state of your people because of your unconditional love, you did not turn back, but proceeded so as to fulfill your Father's will. Thank you for your obedience. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks. Amen and amen. At this time, Christian friends, we go into the ministry of God's Word and we pray to collect together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as lord and king to the glory of god the father amen and amen at this time we will have our responsive reading which is taken from psalm 118 reading from verses 1 and 2 and then 19 to 29 that is Psalm 118, 1 and 2, and then 19 to 29. Here we begin the reading. A song of victory. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. 
Amen. At this time, we will blend our voices once more as we turn to our voices in praise to hymn number 39, All Glory, Law, and Honor. Jesus' visit. 
joyfully praising, tearfully pleading. And our text is taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. It reads, After he had said this, he went ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called Mount of Olives, he sent to his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say it to this. Just say it. The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were on time, he called its owner asked, Why are you on time, the cold? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the cold, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, Jesus, as he rode along, people kept spreading their clothes on the road. And he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of disciples began to praise joyfully with a loud voice for the all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd say to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Gospel of Christ, let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity of once again coming into your presence, hearing from you. We pray, O oh God, that self within each of us will decrease. And we ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit increase in us and let any of us, O oh God, to hear your word this morning and to respond positively to your word. Bless the word of my mouth and meditation of all our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. I recall a most memorable experience in my teens when one of our presidents visited the county of Essequibo, where I was living. All of us who children, men and women of the community lined up along the roadway, waving flags and rejoicing to the grand and ceremonious event, a wonderful and precious memory for me. Recently, I saw another on TV program, a grand welcome given by one of our Caribbean countries to Prince William of Britain and his wife. It was a spectacular sight, but even as many sang praises and rejoiced, there were those who protested and sought an apology for past mistreatment given to their ancestors by the British monarch. We will find that visits, visits by dignitaries to our country or county may generate some mixed reaction among people, and the visitor himself will also have some feelings. I believe there was not much difference between uh, Jesus when he entered Jerusalem. The mixed crowd of people, some were joyfully praising him, others condemning him, and Jesus himself having his own feeling about the situation. In fact, Luke 49, 41, verse 41 of Luke stated, as he came near and saw the city, he wept. Tears flowed. Jesus was sorry for the state of the city. To bring some context 
sent it towards Chetex. We need to go back to some of the events that occurred previously. Earlier in the chapter, Jesus had met Zacchaeus, the tax collector, who welcomed him to his house. There, Jesus told the parable of a king who, upon going on a journey, gave different portions of money to ten of his slaves. To one, he gave ten pounds. To another, five. To another, one. On the king's return, he inquired as to what they did with his monies. Except the one who was given one, the others invested the monies he had given to them. Luke, a Gentile and physician, and close associate of Paul the Apostle, tried to communicate that coming of God's kingdom was not immediate. So while followers waited for his kingdom to come, they must invest wisely in service and mission. So while we wait, we too must in fruitfully invest in service and mission. That message is applicable to each and every one of us today. We all don't know when Jesus will come, but we are certain that Jesus will come again, not riding on a donkey, but as a righteous judge. So while we wait, we are called to engage in fruitful service. Now after those incidents, Jesus continued with his journey passing near Bethany and Bethpage to Jerusalem. However, before entering Jerusalem, Jesus instructed two of his disciples to go and to bring him a colt, a young donkey that was tied at a specific place. The scripture further tells us that prior to this incident, Jesus never rode any animal, nor allowed persons or his disciples to publicly announce or celebrate his works. His humility is displayed as he rode into Jerusalem on that coast. Kings in those days rode on horses as a symbol of their strength to defend it in the event of war. However, from Jesus' action and the crowd and the disciples' knowledge of the Old Testament prophecies, they knew something special and unusual was unfolding on that day. If as the Psalms declare, this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 119.24 Jesus' own statement brought about an increased awareness among them about his lordship. When he said to his disciples, if anyone asks why are you untying it, that is the quote, just say the Lord needs it. Jesus' lordship supersedes anyone else's claim of being Lord and King. Also, it serves as a reminder to them and to all of us that Jesus is Lord of the universe. The Bible declares the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. How often do we seek to hold to our possession because we believe that all we own is blessed with, within us because of our own strength. Even though we are called to be aware that all we have is by God's grace and favor. When the disciples returned to Jesus with the cult, they proceeded to give him 
a red carpet welcome, putting their cloaks on the coat's back, placing them along the pathway. This rejoicing was on a basis of believing that their oppressive leadership, that is the Roman Empire, was about to be overthrown. Prophecy fulfilled in keeping with the words of the prophet Zechariah. They proclaim, rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the fault of a donkey, Zechariah 9.9. Among the lessons we can take away from this Palm Sunday message relating to Jesus' visit are followers of Jesus must first joyfully praise him when he brings changes to our circumstances in life. In the text, the crowd joyfully praised Jesus because they felt a new situations around them were about to change because of his presence and power. The questions we may ask ourselves are, how would I know when Jesus is visiting? And I can recognize the changes in my life situations. And further, do we position ourselves to truly receive and benefit from the grace of God? Luke showed where Simon, a Pharisee, invited Jesus to eat in his house. And there were the marks of hospitality greetings of kiss and praise to Jesus. They celebrated joyfully what Jesus had done in him. His perspective changed radically from exploiting to a generosity born from the grace Jesus extended to him. Mary Magdalene was so elated because of our deliverance from the demonic forces that she was brought, that she bought the most expensive oil and anointed Jesus. What is your experience and reason to praise Jesus? Jesus is the same God who works in miraculous way. If we seek him, we will find him and he will make a difference in our life's situation. At school, you may be among groups of unruly and disruptive children, yet you will not conform to the standard because Jesus is in your life and will enable you to make a difference. You may be at workplace where staff are cursing and abusing fellow workers, but you don't have to be a part of that group. Jesus is in your life, and he can make the difference through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit working in and through you. Living a life of service and witness among those that dwell within your space. The scripture has written in John 15, Jesus outlines the means by which we are empowered to bear good fruit. That is when we are connected to Jesus, the Christ, the very source in whom we have life and our being, our own existence. Having been baptized, accepted Jesus into our lives, Having been conformed as we avail ourselves to the means of grace 
that we may grow as Christ's true followers, serving and witnessing for him. The busyness of striving for a certain standard of living, seeking various means of acquiring material things in life, many of us let slide our connection with Jesus and the work he has entrusted to each of us. We may even cease to meet and find it really difficult to meet. My brothers and my sisters, as followers of Christ, he calls us to a higher standard of living. That is a life of sacrifice, of holiness, one of worship and fellowship with him. In this season of reflection on Jesus' the last day on earth, let us pray and fast and study and meditate on his word and have fellowship with Jesus intentionally. May the Spirit of God so make us bold to joyfully and steadfastly proclaim the name of Jesus in our schools, at work, and in this life as we interact with persons around us. Secondly, Jesus' visit causes us to joyfully praise him when we recognize the truth of his word. This message about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem as king riding on a colt or a young donkey was prophesied over 5,000 years ago by the Israel prophets. It was fulfilled on that specific day when he rode into Jerusalem. Archaeologists were able to tabulate and to conform to the exact date as specified in the Jewish calendar. In addition, Jesus, Jesus' entry at the East Gate that leads directly to the entrance of the temple where lambs for the Passover were slapped and slaughtered was symbolic and confirms that Jesus was the sacrificial lamb once and for all. The fulfillment of this prophecy is lived out in believers' life. The change in life of the believer is a testimony of the living, active power of the Word of God. The Word of God, when preached or proclaimed, accomplishes the purposes of God. Isaiah 51 11. We are called as a witness to the Word, Jesus, and to the written Word to bring about the transformation in the lives of, of persons and users in the kingdom of God. Bible tells us that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Knowing the gospel is the truth and living word gives reasons to joyfully praise and worship the Lord. Third and finally, Jesus' visit to Jerusalem caused anger and led him to weep over the state of the city. The words of his attackers ran out amidst the shouts of praise. The Pharisees urged, urged Jesus, teacher, Order your disciples to stop. But the final words came from Jesus who said, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Luke 49, 39 and 40. A warning was given to those leaders and for all of us that if we don't 
praise Jesus. He is capable to change the hearts of hard-hearted men and women to praise him. Jesus declared with no uncertainty that he is Lord of the universe. Luke went on to the next text to show that as Jesus came nearer to the city, he wept. There are three times mentioned in the Bible where Jesus wept. He wept on entering Jerusalem. He wept when his friend Lazarus died. Jesus wept during that final moment when he was about to crucify. Luke 19.41, John 11.35, and Hebrews 5.7-9. Jesus recognized that there were persons trying to hinder his mission and prevent others from coming to him. He pitied their situation and in his determination to set those men and women free and by extension us sinners, Jesus journeyed on to the cross so that all mankind could be saved and come to know him as Lord and Savior. We can know him as our Lord and Savior when we invite him into our hearts and into our lives. In his finished work on the cross and resurrection, Jesus conquered the works of Satan, thus making it possible for the unloved to love and loved, the criminals to be changed, the drug addicts and abusers to be overcomers, thus making all to be renewed in Christ for service and witness. Today, my sisters and brothers, Jesus is knocking at your door, your heart, seeking to visit, seeking to come into your situation. He is tenderly calling your name. Won't you open for him? And experience that renewal that will only evoke joyful praise. Especially because of the change in your present circumstances and situation. Whatever you might be going through, we can take it to the Lord and He is able to make the change so desired according to His will and purpose. And so I invite you to put your hand in Jesus. To put your trust in Jesus, Jesus weeps for you, his daughter, his son. When we do not live up to the standard of his expectation, when we do not listen to the voice, when we do not listen and seek him and go after the things of him. And so I invite you at this time to call upon him. He is near and he is able to save and bring newness to your situation so that you can joyfully praise his holy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pause a moment as we think about the words, as we think about the message to us this morning. Let us invite Jesus into our circumstances. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious Son, who did not look like the anticipated King as he entered the holy city of Jerusalem riding a young donkey on that Palm Sunday. 
Yet, as he proceeded to the cross, revealed himself as the triumphant and victorious Savior and King. Dear Lord Jesus, much of our daily lives, we do not joyfully praise you. Often we allow the enemy to prevent us from accepting and living out the truth of your word in our lives, in service and witness to you and our fellow men. Holy Lord, enable us by your Holy Spirit to joyfully ap apply the incredible truth of your word to every aspect of our lives and let the peace and joy that you give remain with us as we navigate the challenges of life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Christian friends, that was a wonderful message brought to us by Reverend Judy Patterson. And in response to that wonderful message, let us turn once more to our voices in praise to the hymn number 107, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Remembering that our Lord Jesus Christ, who is seated at God's right hand, makes daily intercession for us. Let's. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks for this day that you have made. We thank you that you have led us through your worship service. We thank you that your word has spoken to us, O Lord. And at this time, we come with our petitions, O God. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as they come to you, O Lord. And we ask, Lord, that even before they come unto you, that you take action with them. Let us pray for our church. Dear God, we pray for this church called Methodist and the people therein, O God. Father, we ask, Lord, that you continue to shower your blessings upon us. O Lord, you have blessed us richly throughout our 200 plus years of witness and service in the MCCA, O God. And we know, Lord, that you will continue to bless us and inspire us for yet another 200 years of witness and service, O God. Father, bless the head of our district, Reverend Niles, and all of his ministerial staff. Father, we ask a special blessing, O God, upon all those who are doing diligent work in their various congregations, O God. Father, bless even the adherent 
who comes to church consistently and regularly and shares in the service of God. For it helps to make the service rich. It helps to make the service pure, O God. Lord, we ask that you bless all of our plans. Bless all of the activities that we have upcoming in the church, O God. And bring it to wonderful fruition. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for our young people. Not only in the Methodist Church, dear God, but the young people throughout the length and breadth of this country and around the world. Father, we know that the youth are the future. When we have gone to the great beyond, O oh God, they are the ones who will be left to run things, O oh God. They are the ones who will be left to take charge. So we have a responsibility to prepare them, O oh God. And we do not take that responsibility lightly. Help us who are in charge of the young people to be diligent in our training of the children so that they will not depart from your word, O oh God. Those of us who are parents, Help us to train them in the way that they should go. Help us to exercise patience, care, and concern for those who are in our charge. Whether they be our biological children or those whom you have blessed us with by other means, O oh God. Lord, we pray for that young child, O oh God, who might be feeling lonely. We pray for that teenager who may be feeling that there is no one who loves them or cares for them. Father, it is our responsibility to let them know that you care. If mother and father forsake them, you will never forsake them, O oh God, and you love them. O oh Father, reach out and touch all of them at this time, O oh God. Especially those who are in making preparations for exams, those who are sitting exams right now, and for the little ones who will be sitting exams coming up, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for this dear land of Gaia. We pray for the government and the opposition. Father, we pray for the military and paramilitary forces, O oh God. Father, we pray for those who are in our institutions of learning. We pray for those, O oh God, who are job hunting. We pray for those who are advertising jobs at this time, O oh God. Father, we pray for the natural resources that you have blessed us with. We pray, O oh God, that you will ensure, O oh God, that all benefit from same, O oh God. That we position ourselves where we can be excellent beneficiaries of what you have provided oh lord bless this nation so that sin will not be a reproach but that its righteousness will see it be exalted oh let like-minded individuals let all of us as christians pray for this dear land of guyana so that its righteousness will exalt this nation lord in your mercy hear our prayers and we pray for those at this time, O oh Lord, who are in war toward areas. Father, of course, the war between Russia and Ukraine, the war in Yemen, the war in Saudi Arabia, dear God. Father, the war that is happening right now, as we know, in Libya, in Syria, O oh God, in Sudan, in Ethiopia. O oh Lord, if there is any area that I may have missed, O oh God, Fail not to send your peace angels into those situations and to speak to those persons, O oh God, who are giving the orders to drop bombs and to fire upon innocent individuals, O oh God. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering. That mother who has lost her husband, that husband who has lost his wife, the children who have lost parents, that mother and father, that grand the grandparents who have lost mother, father, and grandchildren. Oh, Father, the atrocities of war, the horrors of war. Father, we pray for them. Father, we pray and speak peace into those situations. Touch them, oh God. Touch them around the world, oh God. Father, for those of us who are able, may we extend a hand of charity to them by sending the tangible gifts that will help them in their day-to-day -day lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. At this time, let us pray as the Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power.
power and the glory forever and ever. My question, friends, on behalf of Bishop T. Kofi and I, as our district president and the district staff, I take this opportunity to wish you and your family a peaceful day and as well a blessed week under the Almighty God's protection and care. We thank you for joining us from your various locations as well as those who are joining us from overseas. We give thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversary, and any other special milestone. May God's richest blessings continue to rest upon you and in all that you do. Our notices and announcements are as follows. Our weekly Bible study continues at 17.30 hours or 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Also, remember that on Monday, April 11th to April 14th, Holy Week services will be as scheduled by our various circuits. Also, on April 15th, we know that that is the crucifixion of our Lord or our Good Friday service, which will also be held in various chapels according to the circuit's schedule. Also, I must remind you that your Good Friday offering, which, our, which is our special self-denial, is also expected on Good Friday. And I bless you as the Lord bless you in your giving. Remember also that on the 17th of April will be our Easter Sunday service. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. So I invite you to join us in all of these services across the district and do have a blessed time in the name of the Lord. Remember, on our various YouTube and Facebook platforms, we will be with you from 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. Continue to pray for and with each other as we ask God's intervention in our time of need. Remember to show the love of Jesus as you reach out through phone calls and text messages, as well as tangible gifts where possible. Do show extra concern and care to the elderly and those who live by themselves. So, Christian friends, we have spent another day in the presence of Almighty God, and I trust that you were blessed by our divine worship today. As we come to a close, Turn with me once more in your voices in praise to the hymn number 46 entitled I Am the Way. <laughs>
receive the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever.